So, so the, what's the thirty second uh, pitch for woodcut maps? Um, take uh, pick anywhere in the world and uh, choose your woods and get a, a physical, uh, beautiful wood inlay map of that special place uh, delivered to your door. Do you want to join in? I think Catherine. So Catherine, our uh, my uh, co founder and fiance, is joining us. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Nice to meet you. You too. So uh, yeah, so, so yeah, get, that's the pitch. That's no, that that's awesome. I, I I I checked it out. I mean, it's it's a really easy concept. Like you get it immediately when you see it, but it's so cool. I mean, you use Google Maps and then you create artwork. So how did you come up with this concept? Um, it's sort of like a, a long a emergence of longstanding interests in maps and uh, maps uh, architecture software. I, I do a lot of work in location based games and apps that use location-based technology. So I was working with that sort of data before. And um, just sort of a desire to make a project. Um, started out kind of wanting to make CNC milled globes, but when that turned out to be really hard, um, maps was kind of like, okay, we can't do globes, but at least we can do maps. Um, and then sort of a, 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 wed a wedding of a college friend of mine sort of drove everything to the finish line where I was like, oh, this would be the perfect wedding present for my college friend, so um, let's get it together. So that was the first map. It was a wedding present for a college friend. At that point, Catherine was like, oh, this is really cool. I, I want to I wanna be involved in this too. So we teamed up and we found uh, our third partner who does the assembly. Because the thing is, there, maps are like really popular in lots of things right now, lots of crafting things. You see yeah. maps of cities all over, especially in a place like San Francisco. But what was so cool about Gabe's concept was that it was a, a college campus. It wasn't of like a very like popular hipster city of note or anything. It was like you could actually make it of anywhere. Okay. Um, and like there's people with good taste everywhere and people who are really interested and proud of where they're from everywhere. So I was like, this is totally onto something that like should be big and we should make it a business. So you, you, you've democratized artistic map making. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually totally a collaboration between us and the customers because they spend so much time designing it and making choices about where it is and what colors everything is. Yeah, our customers spend hours designing their maps for ordering. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you, I, I, can, I can see how you would. I was playing around with it and, um, and doing my hometown, so it was, it was very cool to, to see Phoenix in wood. Yeah. <laughs> So you, so you 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 built this for you know for your friend's wedding. Did you did you have an idea that it was going to become a business after that, or after you finished it, you was like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. There's other people who would do this. It was always designed to be a sort of web service. I was like, if I'm going to go through all this effort, because part of that vision was like a kind of scavenger hunt of everywhere in the world. It wasn't just making a one-off thing, which would be a kind of straightforward GIS job. It was like sort of releasing this into the world and letting people discover all these crazy, magnificent details of the world on their own and sort of un unleashing the power of the crowd to like map map the world. So it was definitely, I, I like that first map could have been like a few days work if it had been a one-off thing, but it was always supposed to be a project that would launch. But it doesn't it, mean a business. That just means that a lot of people see the app. Yeah. And so it was definitely like kind of when I, when I guess we first saw like the rendering and it sort of rendered in wood textures that I feel like I was like, oh, wow, this is beautiful. Like this is going to be something. People are really going to like this. And we tried it out with friends and family for a long time so that we didn't have to eat all the startup costs ourselves because it's actually quite expensive, all of that wood. So um, while we gave us refining the algorithms for it, we tried it out with our friends and family and they were all loved it so it was, yeah yeah that too yeah our friends were like oh this is awesome you're gonna i want one <laughs> yeah the fact that we that we were able to get our friends to spend like i mean not an insubstantial amount of money they got a great deal they got like half off but like on these things proved to us that it could be a business that's really cool so how hard was it to build the software to do this it was. It took a long time. There were a lot of. It took. A, I think it's. It, was, it took about a year of just kind of side project hacking to get it to the point where it was functional. Okay. Um, 
it, it's some it's in technologies that I've like worked in before, but I, I'd say it was just like a lot of fine tuning and a lot of iteration because the mapping data is just so different based on wherever where wh wherever you are. Um, building building the software that both um, that could work no matter where anyone chose uh, took a lot of iteration, and then there was the additional step of once the sort of software was working, also getting it to uh, to produce physically. So once we got Alex, our laser cutter, involved, uh, there was a lot of back and forth in terms of getting everything so that it would could cleanly be cut and fit together without uh, any conflicts. So it's really been a labor of love. Um, um, I mean, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm really psyched about it. Like we're all really psyched about the product. We all really love it. Um, but it was, it was definitely, it's definitely a business. The goal of it is definitely to start a business, um, making, making these and selling these. So, so you, you started with your friends and they, it seems like they kind of, they were your cap sources of capital. Like they purchased the maps. Yeah. And I mean, that's how you finance it. You didn't go to investors. You you didn't raise money. You actually sold these things, and that's how, like, it's entirely self-funded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all put in a little bit more money um, for other elements as well. To get, we all put in money towards startup costs, but it wasn't a ton of money. There would it would it would have been a, a small amount of money to go to an investor for. The la the largest expense was getting the site designed um, because we knew these things costed. Uh, um, costed. Uh, there's a charger in my backpack. Uh, computer's running out of batteries. Um, we, you know, we released it um, pretty early on for friends and family, and there were really minimal expenses for that. But the site messy. looks like a programmer. Yeah, it was a pretty messy user experience so, situation. But actually, I mean, they all were able to use it because a lot of our friends and a lot of our friends work in tech, and so we knew that they would be more. Um, tolerant of, yeah. of a of a less than glamorous interface, and that was true. But we knew for the public, like if we're going to ask people to spend several hundred dollars on these products, and 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 our our the whole foundation of it is that these are beautiful. This is something you'd be proud of to put in your wall. That we wanted the site to reflect that, and the site to look great. Yeah, too. something we've talked about a lot is doing gallery shows, and so if we wanted it, if we want it to look, if we want to be saying that we're creating something that's polished and gallery quality, the web to look polished in gallery quality too. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so how has customer response outside of your friends been so far? I mean, I imagine it's been pretty positive. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Everyone like like this is the best thing ever. There's like there and, and and the range is is just great too. There are people like this is a cool idea. There are people who just show off the particular map they make and like it's more about the place that they've pictured. Um, we got one like great series of tweets. So we put a lot of attention into the packaging too. Like we want the whole experience to be this like really like craft crafty um, like beautifully produced experience. So someone did like an unboxing series where they like opened the box and took a picture of like the wood the wrapped wood come up inside and then unwrap it and that was. And cool. something that's in that's interesting is that um, so we have an Etsy store as well with some ready mades and we've been at a few craft fairs like Renegade but also like Maker Fair and something interesting this is just an anecdote but I mean I think for handmade items that are really just things that you hang on your wall we have an unusually high amount of orders coming from guys versus <laughs> ladies and um, like at, at Maker Fair what you'll see is you'll see the guys like walk by it and then they realize it's something it's something cool and tech oriented but it's also something beautiful and physical and then they'll like bring over their wives and they're like hey look at this and you can tell they're really excited that they've found something that they can show her at Maker Fair that she might you know not not all women like some women are like super into that but like some of the fancier women that are like oh it is beautiful I could see it in my home and then they start entering in like where they got engaged or whatever so it's been kind of cool to see that and like some people have had to like go back and ask for like you know a purchase a joint purchasing decisions where like they have to ask one partner for permission to spend that much money and for feedback so that's been really cool too and it's been cool also to build like a tech product that has been more featured in like kind of home and garden and interior <laughs> yeah. areas of the press than like this is a cool like than than tech press. Yeah. So how are customers finding out about this now? Is it mostly through fairs, through craft fairs, through their friends? Like how are you promoting the site? 
It's just word uh, of mouth. Yeah, we haven't really done any active promotion. Most of it's been through um, press and well, social media. How did you media. find out about it? Yeah, good question. That is a really good question. I um, I think I just stumbled upon it randomly when I was looking for other startups. And I mean, it, the the idea of a woodcut map just kind of appealed to me. I was like, oh, I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> so I mean, the URL caught my attention. Yeah. <laughs> just right right off the bat, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, it's really simple. I mean, technically, I think they're not woodcuts, but it's such a good... They're, they're technically wood inlay. Well, but... not even. It's technically wood... What's well, marketry, marketry, but, uh, but wood is the same. They mean the same thing. But woodcut is uh, catchier, so we went with that. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and you lay the whole process out on your, your website, so it's not like you're hiding anything. I mean, it's like, this is what it is. This is exactly how you make it. Yeah, one of our friends said that it's just... When, that it's like it feels like it's always existed, and I think that this craft has. It's just yeah. that in this in this sort of implementation of it, where it's based on a ma on mapping on data. data and on you know this new technology of laser cutting and Gabe's algorithm to blend the two together in a really elegant way, has made us be able is it like empowered us to be able to make these kind of maps that a hundred years ago you couldn't you couldn't have you know the tiny little docks on the edge of the water. Um, cut that small and that precisely in, in inlay so tightly with the with the water, so. Well, you, well, you could have, but it wouldn't have been accurate. Well, right, that's what I mean. It yeah. wouldn't be so precise, and the, the fit wouldn't yeah. be as perfect. But Gabe's family actually has, in the house he has growing up, has a piece of art that is basically the same technique, only all cut by hand. But it's equally flat, and it's about the same size as ours. So you don't mention that when you talk about inspiration. So yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's totally a source of inspiration. I mean, he spent his whole life growing up looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, subtle. <laughs> so, so what has been your biggest challenge to date, you know, implementing, you know, getting this rolling, getting this yeah. business out there. The production or, process. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of that is just scaling. I mean, we're scaling. So we got a, t we got a ton of orders from like the internet, when the internet found out about us, when we were like on Boing Boing and Gizmodo and everything. And so we, that scaling up our ability to fulfill the orders was hard, but the big ones, making the big ones has also been yeah. an interesting challenge. Yeah, we've gotten a number of really exciting special orders for sizes that are bigger than we advertise. And we're, of course, really excited about those. And um, But but the bigger the bigger they are, especially as they exceed the size of, um, of Alex's laser cutter, uh, it gets more and more challenging to put them together. Sort of what we thought initially was we could um, do panels, like just make a huge map out of panels of the the smaller sizes but uh you know we quickly when customers actually ordered them realized they wanted a single map so there are a number of challenges there the material is only two feet wide so we need to spread across the material uh we need to make sure the grain lines up um uh, the laser cutter is only a certain size you need a just a lot of physical definitely a lot of physical um physical production challenges so, so it's the scaling up. So the fact that you're getting so many more orders now, that's what's making it, it hard. We're still, we're still a, a, a kitchen. Our, our studio is still our dining room. So, we can uh, show yeah, we can, we can take you on a small tour of the workshop if you're interested. <laughs> awesome. So, do, do you, do you think you'll be able to keep that handmade custom feel as you, as you scale up and become more popular? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We actually introduced a quality control step recently okay yeah because we've, we've hired assist we've hired assistants to to help us make them but we really want to make sure everything stays stays just just i mean we know consistently that everyone says these maps are better in person than they are than they look through photos or even through word of mouth so we it's of the utmost importance to maintain that like my brother was making a map and he was taking a lot of time with it. And he was like, I'm sorry I'm taking so much time like designing this map. It was like a birthday present for him. But he said, but I know I'm going to have it for the rest of my life. So I want to make sure it's, uh, I want to make sure it's perfect. And yeah, there's I mean, no greater like. We ask people on the, on the out, when, after they make a purchase, we ask them what the map is of. And mm -hmm. I think it's like, he's going to have it for the rest of his life. I think they, the people, the people are buying these maps of places that have, yeah, life impact. Really, really, you know, important places to them where they got engaged or they'll do a triptych with 
you know, where each of them is from and then where they live together now. Or a company will get it for their office. You know, it's where everybody comes together every day to work and make things together. And the, like, when you hear these stories, like, it needs to be handmade. It needs to have love go into, like, making it. I mean, I think it's it's core to what the map is. And so that needs to be core to the process of making the map, too. And also just it needs to stand up. Like, it needs to be worth it. Like, it yeah. needs to it needs to live up to that bar of just quality. Yeah. And you touched also on like the fact that these are like emotionally charged objects. Like yeah. it's not just the geometry. Like when we started selling maps, I was like, oh, because one of the things I love about the maps is like the, the cool geometries and the interesting patterns of them. So we made a bunch of maps of like interesting <laughs> landmarks. Like Lake Matakuga. <laughs> in, in in Canada, which is like a crater lake that looks like the Eye of Sauron, basically. And I thought these would sell really well. It's kind of like modern art, but they absolutely didn't. People just really buy them based on places that are emotionally resonant. And these these maps have a lot of emotional charge to them, and that's a kind of privilege to work on, mm-hmm. to make those for people. So, oh, yeah, well. you're really not selling maps. You're selling, like, an emotional experience. It just happens mm-hmm. to be a map. Totally. Yeah. Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah. One but guy the, we like tried to say his name. Yeah. So a guy. So I I, I handle the the call the customer <laughs> service call. So I get basically get all the stories people say when they're like, I really need the map by this date. Like, can you please rush it? And this one guy, he's like, he's separated from his wife, and he was trying to pitch her on getting back together, and was like, I need this map. This map is like of where we met, and I'm gonna show it to her as part of to show her how much I love her and to like try and get her to come back to me and oh, I was wow. like <laughs> wow like that's a lot of that's a lot of faith got it we got to we got to put some good karma into this one yeah so wow i mean that, that's really cool so so what advice would you have for an entrepreneur you know they want they want to build something what what, what would you tell them what you know what's your advice i think that i because I work for a different startup, so something I've been thinking about lately that I think makes this really special is that um, you can tell that it's a good idea. There's many good ideas that don't fall into this rule, but you can tell it's a good idea if it's really easy to explain. Yeah. And like we're able to explain it in two words, woodcut maps. And when yeah, you yeah. it's going it's... on, there's, you know, it's maybe not what you would have expected, but there's no surprise that yeah, that's absolutely something I've drawn. Like, I've worked on like, like of all the projects, like one of the most consistent sort of, one of the most consistent differentiators between um, the ones that have done well and the ones that have not are like easy to explain. And it's critically important because it's not the important thing. Isn't really about you explaining it to other people. Like generally, most of the people who you're explaining to will. It could give you enough of a benefit of doubt just by the fact that you're explaining it to them and they know you and they trust you. It's about you have an idea that's clear and concise enough that when you explain it to them, they'll be able to explain it to whoever they're talking to after that in a way that will excite whoever they're talking to. So it has to like an idea that has enough like concision that it can like kind of last that game of telephone and still be interesting makes a really big difference. So it's not even the thirty second pitch, it's like the two to three word pitch. It's or 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 it's the thirty second pitch that the person you gave the thirty second pitch to is gonna to give to someone else who you don't know. Yeah. So I mean it's you like have to what them to give that. Just like that. What what could they know? Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. Oh, of course. Yeah, so yeah. That, that, is, that is awesome. Point. So yeah, one of these days I'm gonna to have to buy one of these maps. I just gotta figure out what to do, but that's it's really cool. I've wanted one since I saw it. So, cool. cool. Thanks well, we look a lot. forward to making it for you. Well, thank yeah. you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Have a good one.